Hi guys, um, I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I'm here to bring you a little lecture and some notes on the layers of the atmosphere. So your assignment for today is simply to listen to this lecture as I go through um, kind of two sets of notes with you. You're also going to want to grab down a pen and paper, okay? Because you're gonna wanna copy these notes down as we go through them. Um, so, you're going to be responsible as we go through these notes um, for knowing what each layer of the atmosphere is, as well as what is occurring in each portion of the atmosphere. So feel free to, um, you know, pause this video as much as you need to um, when we go through these explanations on the second set of notes, which I'll show you. Um, this is what we normally do in class. Obviously, I can't do it here. Okay, um, but these would be picture notes, maybe. Okay, these would be the picture notes that we usually go through when we draw on the board and we talk about what is in each thing. So um, what is in each layer? So it might be easier for you to kind of follow along with the picture notes and draw some pictures on each of these um, and then add any detail that I'm talking about as well. Okay, um, so. Um, you know, the, the easiest way to think of the layers of the atmosphere is almost like when we talked about layers of the earth. So when we talked about layers of the earth, we talked about, you know, the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, the moho, the crust. And we also, you know, you as students were also responsible for knowing what each portion of those maybe was made out of like nickel and iron, or, um, you know, knowing which layer convection currents occurred in everything like that. So when we talk about layers of the atmosphere, it's very similar um, to that, but instead of going into Earth, you are now looking at the um, layers above the crust or where we stand. Um, so how we're gonna go through these notes is I'm basically gonna start at ground level where we're at, um, and we're gonna go and move up as we get closer to space. Okay, so this first chart that we're going to use is reference. Um, along the y-axis here, you'll see the height. So the further that you go up is the higher getting towards space. Okay, and then obviously the lower at the bottom, you're down at ground level. And then across the x-axis here, when you're looking at this, you'll see the temperatures rising. And what we're going to look at on this graph or chart um, is we're going to follow this red line and that is what is going to show us the changes in temperature as we move up or through the different layers. Okay, um, so there are four main layers of the layers of the atmosphere. Okay, the first one is the troposphere, and that is what you are living in. Okay, the second layer is going to be the stratos excuse me, the stratosphere. Then you have the mesosphere. Then you have the thermosphere. Okay, so those are the four main layers, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and then your thermosphere. Well, you might be looking at this and seeing these dashes or dotted lines saying, well, what, you know, what do these mean? Okay, so you have the tropopause, which is basically the barrier or the separation as you move from the troposphere to the stratosphere. Okay, and the same thing happens as you move from the stratosphere to the mesosphere. You have the boundary or layer, um, which is going to be your stratus, uh, stratopause, okay? And then as you move from the mesosphere to the thermosphere, once again, you have your mesopause, okay? So your four main layers are in capitals here, and then all of the boundaries in between are represented on those dotted lines, okay? Um, so we're going to start right at the bottom here. The um, troposphere, this is what you are living in. So if you notice, right, if we're going by temperature, the average temperature, you know, we're saying for main part is usually around 70 degrees. Now, obviously that fluctuates depending on the season, okay? However, um, for the most part, if you're looking at Fahrenheit, it is 70 degrees, okay? If we're following this red line across, what this means is, as you're moving up in altitude or up higher, okay, it's starting to get colder. So as you move up, okay, as you move up in height, 
how your line's moving up, you're climbing that mountain, it's getting cooler and cooler and cooler in the layer. Okay, so some main things that we should talk about. Okay, and as I said, we typically write these all out on the board and go through all these different things. Um, so at the very end, if you have questions, feel free to read them in the comments. Feel free to, you know, um, Zoom with me, whatever makes it easier for you to understand. Okay, um, so some main important facts. If you're looking at one, okay, this box here, this is going to be all of the main things or important things that you are responsible for knowing that occur, okay, in um, the troposphere. Okay, excuse this spelling there. Okay, the troposphere. So as you should know, the troposphere is the lowest layer to ground. This is where you are at. Okay, so where we are living. So some important things. If we're starting in this corner, it is the lowest layer and almost all weather occurs here, right? So your rain, your snow, any kind of precipitation typically occurs here. However, in some cases, there are larger thunderstorms depending on the cloud type, which could possibly push you up into the next layer. So that is why I'm saying that almost all weather occurs here because majority of weather does. However, in some cases, you might find that it gets pushed up to the next level. Okay, so this is where you live, right? This is supposed to be a little person. Okay, this is where you live. You are breathing in oxygen and you are releasing carbon dioxide. And if you are not familiar with what that process is, it would be the process of cellular respiration. Okay, you'll learn about that next year in biology. And then on the opposite side of that, this is a tree here. Your tree is taking in that carbon dioxide that you're breathing out, okay, or the carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere, and it's going through the process of photosynthesis to release oxygen back into the air. Okay, so that is why trees are very, very important. You know, um, why the Lorax hates when you cut down any trees is because it, the trees are producing oxygen that you breathe. So some other important things in this level, um, this should be familiar to you, convection currents, right? You've heard about convection currents before. Um, convection currents you heard when we talked about um, the movement of plate tectonics, right? So it was the cycling of cool magma getting pushed back down and warm magma seeping up. So the same thing kind of happens here in your troposphere. Okay, except now it's obviously not happening with magma, but it's happening with air. So your cold air starts to rot, or excuse me, starts to fall. And then as your cold air starts to fall, you're going to have the warm air that rises to the top, which is going to create a air pressure gradient. Okay, and that air pressure gradient is very important for us. Um, you know, as if we're going back to this, okay, as you move up, the troposphere, okay, so for example, if you're climbing a mountain, um, there is less air pressure, meaning that there's going to be less oxygen for you to breathe, okay? So some people have maybe climbed Mount Everest, and you might have actually seen pictures of these before where they kind of get die and they basically freeze to the side of the mountain. Um, so up as you're climbing, since that mountain is so tall, you actually need, in most cases, well, you definitely need to prepare for it, okay? However, um, in some cases, you'll have to bring oxygen with you, okay? Because there's very little there. So the higher that you're getting up in the troposphere, do that at air pressure gradient, the less oxygen that is available to you, okay? So in the past, what has happened is some athletes have actually trained at higher levels of altitude because then their body is used to um, taking in less oxygen. So it was helping them perform better because they're taking in that less oxygen or there's less oxygen available to them. So therefore, when they get back down to ground level or, you know, where there's plenty of oxygen, then their body, you know, is used or not used to, but their body is actually kind of, let's say, overstimulated because they're getting so much more than what they're actually used to. Okay. So that has become illegal. Um, I think, uh, 
trying to think of who the athlete was. I think it was, um, you know, someone that professionally rode bikes, um, was doing that, but I know, um, you know, it's, it's beneficial for athletes. Um, so therefore it is now of course legal to do. Um, do, 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 do. All right. So what you'll also notice is if you have climbed a mountain before, um, or if you have not, or maybe you want to, as you start climbing up, it gets colder, right? So we talked about following this red line. Okay. That is very, very, very true. You might start off at the bottom of the mountain, nice and warm. And then as you get to the top, you probably need at least a coat, um, depending on the season, depending on the location of the mountain. Okay. So, um, air gradients. Okay. And then we're going to go up here. So now that this is a fun fact, but as you move up in height to 3000 or excuse me, to 30,000 feet, okay. Due to that air pressure, your the bubbles in your gas, excuse me, the gas bubbles in your blood are actually going to kind of bubble out. So it's going to become very toxic for you because you're not going to have enough um, oxygen in your blood um, due to that air pressure. Okay. Um, this is something you should all be very familiar with. Okay. We've talked about this before is that in the atmosphere, there is 78% of nitrogen. 21% of it is also oxygen. And then the last one that you should be very familiar with is carbon dioxide. Okay. And carbon dioxide we have said is 0.04%. However, we know that that number is rising, okay, due to the amount of fossil fuels that we are using, okay? So those three you should be very familiar with. You should be very familiar with the amount of nitrogen, oxygen, oh my gosh, excuse me, and carbon dioxide, okay? And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is the altitude and temperature. So we just looked at this, right, and we said as you're moving up, it gets colder. Well, how cold does it get? So what we have learned is that for every 1,000 feet you are moving up, it drops 3.5 degrees, okay? So say if you were at ground level, right, if you started off at the ground and it was 70 degrees outside, and then you climbed up 2,000 feet, okay, into the troposphere, then your temperature should decrease, right, by seven degrees, okay? We know it should decrease by seven degrees because for every 1,000 feet, it drops 3.5. So if you climb 2,000 feet, it would drop seven, okay? So 3.5 times two. So if you started at 70 degrees, you climb 2,000 feet, you should be at what temperature? You should be at 63 degrees, right? Okay. So then, as we're moving along, we have the Tropus Falls. Okay, this is the barrier. There's very, very minimal oxygen there, and that's really all you need to know about that layer. Our next layer that we're going to talk about is the stratosphere. Okay, so in the stratosphere, um, some important things to talk about, okay, is that at the lower part of the stratosphere, you'll see this, you know, our temperature line, it's, it's up, and, up and down. What does that mean? Okay, so at the bottom of the stratosphere, you have a portion of it, okay, which is going to be called isothermal. So what that means is it's a constant temperature. It's not getting cooler. It's not getting hotter, but it stays a constant temperature. Okay. Then you'll see as we begin to get higher again in the stratosphere, it's starting to not decrease in temperature, but your temperature is actually starting to increase again. So it's starting to get warmer as you move up your stratosphere. Okay. It's starting to move up. Um, it's getting warmer. Okay. In your stratosphere, you're going to find your ozone. Okay. And there's two types of ozone. So the ozone that's in this layer that you're used to hearing about, right, um, is let's say our good ozone. 
right? Our ozone layer, which is going to help protect us um, from different UV rays. Okay. Um, however, there's another type of ozone that sits at ground level. Okay. And sometimes you'll hear about it on the news in the summertime, um, that ozone at ground level. Ozone at ground level is really, really bad for you. Okay. It's really, really bad for you, especially if you have prior existing conditions with your lungs, okay, such as asthma or if you're elderly. Okay. So sometimes on the news, I'll tell you, um, you know, about ground ozone layer, like it's a, um, advisory day. And that is because of the bad ozone. Okay. That's actually hurtful to you, but typically, okay. The ozone layer is in the stratosphere and it's a really, really good thing that we have because it protects us from the UV rays. Okay. So there's three types of UV rays. There's UVA, okay. UVB and UVC rays. So UVA rays are probably the most common, okay? They can get through the ozone layer and that is what causes sunburn. So if you're outside and, you know, your mom, like my mom is still, okay, freaking out about putting on sunblock, you should listen to them, okay? UVA rays are the ones that can get through the ozone layer and that is what it gives you sunburn. UVB rays, some of these are able to get through the ozone layer, okay, and that is what causes skin cancer, okay, and then UVC is actually stopped, um, they never hit earth, okay, so UVC never hits earth, UVB is what causes skin cancer, and UVA is what causes skin burn. All right, so other important things, or the last important thing in this um, stratosphere layer is that there are winds, okay, and you should think of these as kind of like a river of winds um, that can move as fast as 100 miles per hour, and they are called the jet stream. So the jet stream is responsible for all of our weather movements. So if you've ever watched the news and you saw, you know, the lady or man that's on there and they're always moving from left to right like showing the storm it's coming from the left side of the screen where california is at and it moves across the united states over to where we're at in new jersey okay so all weather is directed due to these jet streams and that's the way that they move they're moving from the west where california's at okay to the east where new jersey's at Okay, so they go all around the world, okay, but our jet streams, if you're looking at the one specifically across the United States, moves from California to New Jersey. All right, so the stratosphere, okay, those are the things you should be responsible for and you should know, okay, is that the lower part of it remains constant, okay, the jet streams are rep responsible for the weather movement, and the types of ozone, or excuse me, the ozone layer is there, okay, that blocks the specific or different types of UV rays. So then as we move up to the next layer, okay, we have the mesosphere. Okay. So we first, excuse me, have this stratopause, uh, stratopause, which is going to be the layer between the stratosphere and the mesosphere. And then we have our mesosphere. Okay, so once again, your temperature is then going to start decreasing and getting cooler. Okay, so there's not that many things that you really need to know for the mesosphere, but you should know that this is the coldest layer. Okay, it is the coldest layer. And this is going to be where all of your spray, uh, excuse me, all of your space debris burns up. Okay, all of your space debris is burning up. So, what happens in this layer is that if you were ever to go outside and you're staring, and sometimes it's hard, okay, in places like New Jersey, because there is um, light pollution. Right? So if you specifically are living in West Effort, 
right, and you were to look across over towards Philly, it might be hard to actually see the stars in the sky because of light pollution. However, if you were in an area where there's not much light pollution, there's lots of trees, okay, you're able to see stars really, really well. The other thing that you'll see is possibly a shooting star. Okay, so shooting stars are actually going to be our meteoroids that are burning up in the mesosphere. Okay, so there are gases in the mesosphere, very, very little gases. Okay, but those gases, what's happening is as a meteorite enters, okay, the mesosphere is it's going to interact with the gases that are present there and it's going to cause friction. It's going to make it burn up. That's actually going to be what your shooting star is. Okay, so anytime you see that, you can now tell your friends, okay, that the meteorite is actually burning up, creating that shooting star. Okay, and that is happening in the mesosphere. All right, we're almost done. The layer between the mesosphere and the thermosphere is called the mesopause. Okay. So then your last layer is going to be the thermosphere. The thermosphere is your hottest layer. Okay, your hottest layer. So what you'll notice is if we're following this, um, you know, temperature line again, it starts going all the way back to the right. It is the hottest layer. And this kind of seems odd because it seems like the trend for the most part that you're following is that it's getting cooler as you go up. Okay, however, not in the thermosphere. Okay. The thermosphere is the hottest layer, and the reason that it is the hottest layer is because in the thermosphere you have nitrogen, okay, there's a very small amount of nitrogen, and it's spaced out very far between each other, these molecules. However, when you have UV rays come in, okay, it interacts with that nitrogen, and it causes the temperature to get really, really hot. Okay, so as the UV and the nitrogen react together, it warms it up, that layer, okay, to either 2,000 degrees Celsius or it can get hotter than that. Okay, so it's a very, very warm layer. Um, some things you should know about this layer is that there's two main parts to it. Okay, so if we're looking at the lower part of this layer, that is called the ionosphere. Okay, um, the lower part of that is called the ionosphere. And in this layer, there's these um, charged ions, okay, these positive charged ions that are going to be able to send electrical signals. So what happens is you have a satellite, okay, and your satellite reacts with the ions and then it sends a message. I don't want to say back home, but it sends a message back, okay, to... Um, on Earth, another satellite in which we would get AM frequency radio. Okay, so all AM radio is due to these positively electrical charged ions that are in the ionosphere. Okay, and then the second main layer, or the you know the, the higher layer, let's say, of the um, thermosphere would be your exosphere. Okay, so. In your exosphere, this is where you're going to have um, majority of space things. So this is where your satellites would orbit. This is where you would have your International Space Station. Okay, these would all be located in the exosphere. And then the last part, okay, which isn't really like Part A here and B, we're saying, are like the two portions of the thermosphere. Okay, but but the magnetosphere you should be familiar with, right? The magnetosphere was generated where? Hopefully you're saying this. Generated from the outer core, right? We said the magnetosphere has a huge importance to us and that it's protecting us from, you know, Earth's solar winds, um, you know, so that generation from the outer core puts the magnetosphere basically the furthest thing out to space, okay? So when we're talking about, um, you know, layers of the atmosphere or things going into space, nothing has ever crossed the magnetosphere, okay, except for astronauts when they went to the moon, 
Okay, that is the only thing that has ever crossed the magnetosphere is astronauts when they went to the moon. Okay, unless you're talking to Mr. Manser who tells you that that never happened. Okay, but other than that, um, nothing has gone past the exosphere where all the space things are, or like the space stations, the satellites are. Okay. Um, this is also the magnetosphere is what traps that UVC. Okay, so previously in um, the stratosphere level, right, we said that the UVC never hits Earth and it doesn't hit Earth due to, okay, the magnetosphere. Okay, the magnetosphere is what, or what saves us or protects us um, from the sun's radiation, from um, solar winds. And then the other kind of cool thing that happens in the magnetosphere is the northern lights. So if you've ever seen the northern lights or the aurora borealis, um, you know, it's these different charged particles. And typically, I think Alaska gets a big name for seeing these. Um, sometimes the northern states, you'd be able to see these too. But it's kind of like a greenish or purplish glow in the sky. Okay, so it's really neat to see. Okay, so to kind of wrap everything up. There's four main layers, okay, of the atmosphere. The troposphere, which we are in, the stratosphere, which contains our ozone layer, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere, four main layers. What we just went through is all the important information that you should know, oh my gosh, excuse me, in each of those layers, okay, all the important things that you should know in each of those layers. Along with posting this on Google Classroom, I'll also post this, okay, if it helps you write down or, um, you know, summarize your thoughts, okay? Um, so the way that these nodes work is you have your troposphere here, then you move up your stratosphere, then you would move up the paper, your mesosphere. And then what we would usually do in class is we would just tape a second paper up so it would keep going up. Okay, but in this case, you gotta scroll all the way to the bottom. Then you'd have your thermosphere. And then these are kind of extensions as you move to outer space. All right, so what you're gonna have to do is, once again, write down your notes, take a picture of your notes, and just attach them to Google Classroom so I can see what you have done. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, write them in the comments or write them down or excuse me, message me to Zoom or, you know, anything that I can help clear up for you. Let me know. All right. Um, I hope you had a great weekend and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.